Okay, let's try it together. A spotlight on the ground shines on a wall 12 meters away. If a man, if a two meters tall man walks away from the spotlight toward the building at a speed of 1.2 meters per second, how fast is the length of the shadow on the building? Decreasing when he is four meters away from the building. Okay. <clears throat> so let's try to draw this picture. So you have a spotlight on the ground shining, and here's the building. And the, the distance between the spotlights and the building is 12 meters. Okay, and that doesn't change. And then here's a guy, two meters tall, and when he's here, the spotlight will shine on him and give a gigantic looking shadow, right? Somewhat fearfully looking, right? On, on the wall of the building. Okay. But then he is walking towards the building, so his shadow is going to shrink as he's walking. So the question is, how fast is the shadow going to decrease when he is four meters away from the building? Okay, okay we, we need to draw a simpler version of this in order to come up with uh, uh, some, some relations and formulas. Okay? So let's just think of it this way. We have the building and the spotlight, and this is 12. And then there's this man who's two meters tall. Okay? Now, the key is to only write numbers that are unchanging. Okay? See, in the question, you have 12, 2, and 4. You're only going to write the numbers that are unchanging, 2 and 12. Do not write 4. Why? Because uh, he is walking towards the building and, and therefore his position with respect to the, the building is always changing. Okay? So that's all I have. And after this, now you have to think about various uh, derivatives and their relations. Okay? So let's look at the question again. Uh, do you see any rate of change or speed or fast? Do you see those words? I see them, right? Speed, okay, and uh, how fast is the sh how fast is the length of his shadow on the building decreasing when he is four meters away from the building, right? So, so in order to talk about his speed, since he's moving that way, uh, I guess you can keep track of his speed by putting this value here as x. Because as he's moving, the x is going to increase, and the change of x is actually the speed that this man is walking. Is, is that good? Right. And then I'm going to put a y for the shadow, because shadow is also changing. If anything is changing, you put a variable. If, you, if anything is a constant, you put the numbers on the, on the, on the picture. Okay. All right, so we're actually almost done. All right, first, speed is 1.2. How do you write that down? Dx dt equals to 1.2. And what's the question asking for? What are we supposed to find? dy dt when x is? 4. No. 8. 8. Y8. Eight. Where did 8 come from? Yeah. So, uh, if you read the question carefully, he's four meters away from the building, so his position with respect to the building is four. So what is this length? Then? Twelve minus four, which is eight. Okay. So this this here is obtained by twelve minus eight. Okay. So this is given information. This is what we have to figure out. Therefore, we have to come up with a relationship between x and y. How do we do that? Well, uh, if you have more than one triangle, uh, when, when you draw the picture, most likely you'll be using s similar triangles. Okay? So use the property that you have two triangles which are similar, 
And from there, you can come up with the ratio equation, the equation of ratios, and that's going to give you the equation between x and y. Okay? So let's think about it. Do you see the two similar triangles? Small one here and the large one here. Okay? So what 2 is to x is what? Y is to 12. Okay. What 2 is to x in the smaller triangle is in the big triangle is y is to 12. Okay. Uh, is height with respect to the base, height with respect to the base. So we have this equation, which says that if I cross multiply, see if you have ratios, you can cross multiply, right? If I cross multiply, uh, 24 equals x times y. Uh, okay, so that, that's what I have, and then uh, let, let's, you can just use, you can decide to use uh, implicit differentiation here, uh, but I, I want to solve for y, I think that's slightly easier, so I'm going to solve this for y, which is 24 over x, and let's differentiate to find the, the derivative, okay? So what is dy dt? dy dt is the derivative of 24 over x is negative 24 over x squared okay, times dx dt. Okay, remember, uh, here, both x and y change with respect to time. Okay? So whenever you differentiate both sides by t, while both x and y are functions, therefore you have to use the chain rule. So, Derivative of y with respect to t is dy dt. Not only that, if you differentiate 24 over x by t, it's uh, derivative of 24 over x is negative 24 over x squared. And, and then the x, which is the inside function, has to be pulled out and differentiated. That's where this dx over dt comes from. By the way, uh, hopefully everyone knows that 1 over x prime is negative 1 over x squared. Okay. I mean, you can get this out of the power rule. See, this is uh, x to the negative one power, and, and uh, if you use the power rule, negative one comes front, and then you can do all the calculations that you can get. <coughs> this formula appears uh, enough times that you should probably just memorize it, okay? All right, so this is what we get. Now we can just plug in uh, and get the answer, right? x equals to eight, so x equals to eight, and therefore, negative 24 over 8 squared. dx dt is 1.2. And uh, whatever that is, that's, that's your answer. Okay, let's see. Uh, it's negative 3 over 8. 80, 80, 80, 80, 80. 9 over 20. Mm. I think it's negative 4.5. No, it's negative 0 0.45 meters per second. Okay. So if you use your calculator, that's what you're. Any question? Any questions? Do you want me to explain anything? Yes. Can you explain how you set up the triangle? Like how how you knew where to put it? Uh, what? Oh, okay. So so to review the triangle first. Draw, draw the, the picture to get a feel for what's going on, and then see if you can simplify this with, by, by using a very simple geometrical object. And see, this is a light which goes as a straight line, so therefore this must be a straight line, wall is supposed to be a straight, ground is assumed, all, all these are assumed to be straight, so you have this large triangle. And then, since the height of the man is unchanging, you, you put another bar here. And you end up with this two set of triangles that capture everything in, in, in all the information from the picture. Okay? And then, uh, once you have the picture, you want to put all the numbers for the, from, that's shown in the, the problem, but only those numbers which are not changing. So 2 never changes, 12 never changes. And then, uh, I guess the hard part is, uh, how do you know to put x here, and how do you know to put y there, and all that? 
think. I mean, if if you're not so sure, you can do the following. You can just put x, y, and z, and w, and you can just put all the variables everywhere. And uh, probably at the end of the day, you're, you're still going to figure out which one to, to use. Okay. I thought that um, four meters away from the wall would also be a constant because the guy is standing there. No, no, he's moving at 1.2 meters per second. I know, but then they're asking when he stands. Oh, no, no, so it's like this. Uh, if he's moving at 1.2 meters per second and it suddenly stopped, then what's the rate of change of the shadow? Zero. It's not going to change. The rate of change is zero because he suddenly stopped. Yeah. This question only makes sense if he's continued to move, he's uh, continuing to move at 1.2 meters per second. So, yeah, that's a good question. Thank you. Okay. So, um, so, my suggestion is, so one possible way is to put variables everywhere, but that's, that's an overkill. My suggestion is, try to read from the question uh, if there's any word like speed, how fast, rate, anything like that should be translated to derivatives. And once you try to re write down this as a derivative, then you're forced to come up with a variable. See, this is 1.2 meters per, per second for how fast the person is moving, right? So you're forced to, to put an x here because how are you going to measure how fast this, this person is moving? You have to measure the speed with respect to a, a, a non-moving object, right? So, so that's why you, you're forced to put an x there. Same thing for this, because this is about the shadow on the, on the wall. You're just forced to put a, put a y there, okay? And once you have this, then uh, you really don't see any more need for putting other variables because already you have one, one rate and uh, if you can come up with the relationship between this x and y, uh, and then you're done. So that, that's how we solve it.